everybody, I'm God's girl, and this is Maggie, <laughs> and this is Bible study with Maggie and me, and um, we hope that uh, you guys are having a good weekend, and uh, we're excited to get into our study today. Uh, we're going to be reading Genesis chapter 6 and Matthew 25, uh, a lot of uh, really interesting uh, stuff we're going to read about today, but, um, anyway, <laughs> sweet Maggie, um, all right, so we should probably say our prayer and get started so this doesn't, uh, run on and on and on, all right, y'all say the prayer with me, no, <laughs> okay, I'll say the prayer. All right, I'm going to say the prayer, and then we'll get started. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day, and I thank you for uh, this time together with everybody that uh, is watching today. I want to pray for everybody that's watching, whatever their needs are, Lord, that you would help them and give them strength, uh, whatever they're going through today. I know that everybody's going through something, Lord, and we just pray that you would uh, work in all of our hearts. Um to just seek you, Lord, uh, with everything that we have, Lord. May we surrender our lives back to you as you've given it to us. And um, we just thank you, Lord, for your love, for your grace, for your help. And um, just pray that you would help me through the Holy Spirit as I read your word today and um, as I share your gospel. And I love you, Lord. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's get started. Uh, get your Bibles out, and uh, if you don't have your Bibles, you know, it's all right. Um, I'll put the words on the screen, but let's get started in uh, Genesis chapter 6. And it says, When men began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind, whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground, and birds of the air. For I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower and middle and upper decks. I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you. And you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives, with you. 
You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you, two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground, will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. And that is the end of chapter 6. <laughs> and, um, wow, what an interesting time uh, in the world. Um, so, <clears throat> before I get to uh, my takeaway, I kind of just want to briefly touch on uh, this part about the uh, Nephilim. I'm not great at saying saying the word, so y'all bear with me. But, um... <clears throat> I did look up how to pronounce it, and I believe it's it's Nephilim. And um, the deal with them is that, you know, it says that um, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they were the heroes of old men of renown. Um, so there is a lot of theories on what this means and what these Nephilims were. Um, I've looked into it and um, the, the, the most popular theory is that um, that they are like fallen angels um, that you know have uh, chosen to rebel against God. Uh, that's what a fallen angel is. Um, you know Satan used to be an angel. He, he was created for good purposes. Um, he actually, the Bible describes uh, him when he was in his, um, he was created for a good purpose. You know, God didn't create him to be uh, the devil. So uh, he was created for a good purpose. And it's, it, the Bible tells how beautiful he was. Like he was one of the most beautiful angels. He had a very high position. Um, in heaven, you know, he, uh, he talked that he was, uh, in charge of guarding God's throne. Um, so it was a very, he was created with very important purposes. Um, <clears throat> but of course that went to his head and, uh, he rebelled against God. He decided that, uh, you know, he should be God. You know, why, you know, if he looks this good and he's got, this much power um, and authority in heaven, you know, as an important, you know, angel or whatever, uh, he decided that, you know, he thought he should be God and uh, really that he was better than God. So, um, and uh, in Revelation, um, it is, it, there's a verse that is believed to mean that the devil took uh, one third of the angels in heaven with him. And, um, or, I mean, they chose, it's, angels have free will too, you guys, that's the point here. Uh, they chose to rebel with him. So, um, that shines a light on the fact that, you know, there are very many fallen angels, um, and that when an angel, you know, chooses to rebel against God, um, you know, they're cast out of his presence, and, uh, you know, pretty much turn into demons. That's what a fallen angel is. It becomes a demon. So, um, so the, uh, the Nephilim here, um, you know, some, I've read where there's some theories where people think that, uh, perhaps it was, uh, like, you know, like a demon possession situation where, um, these fallen angels, possessed men and then these men conceived with women and you know had these uh beastly children um but you know and again there's there's several theories about this there's no way for us to know exactly you know the mystery of this uh you know nephilim race but um again the going theory and what i believe is that it was fallen angels. Um, and uh, 
So that's really shocking. <laughs> that's pretty shocking to imagine, you know, um, these fallen beings having relations with, you know, human women and producing, you know, these beastly children. Um, and, uh, I mean, this talks about what a wicked time it was on earth. Um, this was a very, you know, wickedness had very much taken over. And, um, to me that, you know, that pretty much confirms that it was, um, a very demonic time, um, on earth. And that, you know, again, that, that really kind of points to, to what I believe that the Nephilim were. But anyway, that's just, um, very interesting to me. And, uh, the thing about it is, you know, you could say to yourself, like, wow, you know, how did angels, you know, live on the earth with humans or whatever. But the thing about it is, is even, even now, um, in the New Testament, uh, which is, you know, the covenant that we're like living under now, uh, it talks about in uh, the book of Hebrews that, you know, some have entertained angels unaware. And, uh, so, I mean, that shows us, you know, that, you know, angels do have that ability to uh, be among us. And uh, we probably don't even realize or recognize, you know, that's the point. They said, you know, some have entertained angels unaware. You know, we're not going to necessarily recognize them because they do look like, like humans. Um, uh, there's no account in the Bible that says that angels have wings. Uh, first off, and um, I mean, of course, they wouldn't in in uh, in this world, but I don't think they they ever did. I I don't know. It it doesn't it doesn't say you know. There's no account for angels ever having wings. Uh, so I believe that they have very much the appearance of of uh, of man, and um, but obviously, you know, they are they are heavenly beings, so they have. Um, you know, God has blessed them with certain um, powers uh, that were created uh, for good purposes. And uh, when an angel falls and chooses to rebel against God, um, you know, they, uh, they still have those powers. And they use them for evil purposes and intent. And uh, that is where we see, you know, um, you know, demon, demon possession is, is very real. Um, obviously it talks about it a lot in, uh, in the new Testament of people that came to Jesus with evil spirits and he would cast them out. But, uh, anyway, it's very real. Um, you know, it's not something to, to play around with and mess around with. You don't want to mess around with the devil, you guys. Um, it's not, it's not good. The Bible tells us that, uh, Satan is out to steal kill and destroy us um you know he knows he messed up with god he knows he has no hope and no future you know he he had everything and he lost it he chose a very um destructive path and um he since he can't have god he doesn't want anybody else to either and uh well he wants to be god that's the problem and um you know, he wants that, that glory and that praise. And, you know, he's out to take as many people with him to damnation as possible. So, um, but anyway, I, I don't want to get too far off uh, track here because I do want to get to my takeaway, which is uh, Genesis 6, 7 through 8, which says, so the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And uh, I think that is just wow, you know, because again, the, the times that Noah was living in, you know, was so wicked. Um, the fact that it says here how uh, every inclination of a man's heart was only wickedness continually. Um, it's it's it says it was only evil all the time. Um, wow, you know what a what a time. And uh, 
So, you know, this, this level of uh, wickedness, you know, God could not bear. It said it caused him, um, it caused his heart great pain. And uh, he was grieved, you know, he was grieved at the times. Um, you know, God is holy and uh, he's good and he's loving and he created us with a very uh, good purpose. And uh, he did not create the world to be so wicked and um yeah so it it had to be you know the earth had to be to be judged um at this time and what's so amazing though is that you know is that it says noah you know was uh, a righteous man blameless among the people of his time and he walked with god and um you know that reminds me of uh, enoch what we had talked about how it said that he walked with God and um, you know God spared Enoch death and uh, in a sense he also spared Noah uh, because you know God's plan was to uh, to d destroy the earth with a flood uh, because the wickedness was so great that it grieved his heart and uh, but Noah you know found favor in the eyes of God because he walked with God and uh god spared noah and his family you know the the death of that time and um you know it's just something that um you know i find very um incredible and i find very uh inspiring um that noah you know found favor in the eyes of of the lord and uh, that doesn't mean that you know that he it's not telling us that Noah was a perfect person. You know, I don't believe Enoch was a perfect person. I don't believe anybody um, in this life, in this world, you know, is uh, is perfect. Um, but what it tells us is that he walked with God and God came first. That's the point. This is the same with Enoch. You know, when it says, when it says somebody walked with God, that means they sought God first in their life, in their affairs, in, you know, the events of their life. You know, they sought God first. God came first. He was important to them. And, um, it, you know, it really came down to, um, like it does today, a relationship with God. They had a relationship with God. And, um... You know, it's just, it's very uh, inspiring to us um, as Christians today, you know, to, um, you know, to put God first. Like it's, you know, it, again, it's a relationship we should want to. Um, so anyway, I just, you know, that's something to take away to really say to ourselves, you know, um, you know, I want to. You know, I want to be like that. I, w I want to walk with God. I want to know him, you know, so personally um, and, you know, have a, a deep relationship with him. That's what he wants from us. And that is what set these people apart in their time. Um, you know, it was their relationship with God was important. And that's what set them apart in God's eyes. You know, they gave their lives back to their creator. And, um, you know, that was, that made, the, that's what made them special um, in God's eyes was that he, you know, he came first. And um, it's a very beautiful and special thing when we as God's creation um, give our lives back to our creator. That's very special to God. Um, like I said, this is a relationship. He wants a relationship with his creation. And um, so it's very, you know, it's a very powerful thing when we do that. And um, so, yeah, I just, I love that, you guys. I love it. All right, let's read uh, chapter 25 of Matthew now. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. 
Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of the servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put your money on deposit with the banker, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents, for everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we... See you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you. When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do 
for one of the least of these you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. And that is the end of chapter 25. And uh, Jesus is um, talking about uh, the judgment at the end of time. And uh, he's giving uh, parables to describe, you know, what it would be like. And um, he is, you know, warning his um, disciples. Well, he's really warning all of us of, you know, how, how it will be through these uh, parables. And um, so the deal is, is uh, I do want to talk a little bit here about the parable of the um, talents, because I think this parable can be kind of confusing. I know that it's been kind of confusing to me in the past, and um, I have looked into it further to really figure out what exactly is, um, you know, Jesus trying to explain to us here. And uh, what I have found is that, you know, he's basically just telling us that, you know, at, everybody is going to have to come before the judgment throne of God at the end of, of time, or the end of the world, however you want to say it. Um, just as it was in the days of Noah, um, you know, the earth was uh, judged in a sense at that time. Noah was spared because he was a righteous man who sought God. He wasn't perfect, you know, but he, he sought God. God was, his creator was important to him. And um, so he was spared and considered righteous. Um, but the earth was very much judged at that time for its wickedness. And, uh, you know, God said, we'll read um, soon in Genesis where God makes a promise to never destroy the earth by a flood ever again. Uh, when, um, you know, the, the earth is, is reaching um, a point uh, now <laughs> where wickedness is taking over once again. And uh, it is a matter of time before God seeks justice once again. And uh, it's not going to be by a flood this time. It is um, going to be by fire. So um, very much like uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, which we'll get into that too. That's another kind of uh, foreshadowing of what's going to happen to the earth uh, at the, you know, at the end of time. Um, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire, and that's how it's going to go down once again. So, um, but, uh, but anyway, so, you know, the earth is going to have to be judged once again, but it's going to be judged once and for all, um, this next time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing because for us that, um, that know the Lord, you know, we're going to get to, um, uh, to be with him forever he's going to create a new a heaven a new earth um for us to live in with him for all eternity it's very hard to wrap our uh our our brains around forever but um it's a wonderful thing but the point here is that uh we all will have to come before the judgment seat of god and uh give an account for our life and that's what's being that's what is the point of the parable here about the talents and um, that we will, you know, have to give an account for, um, you know, how well we took care of what we have and um, the blessings he gives us and, um, you know, just um, our actions, you know, our actions. And that's what the parable of, uh, the the one here at the end where it talks about how we will be divided right and left the sheep on the right the goats on the left and uh how jesus says you know well i was hungry you gave me food i was thirsty you gave me drink you looked after me you know and the righteous say when do we do this and he said well when you did it for someone else you did it for me and um again that really highlights how you know we should serve others above ourselves. Jesus did that in his time on the earth, and he set the example and the standard for us, and uh, we should follow that same
um, example. But again, it, it do, this does tie in with the parable of the talents because again, it's giving an account for our life, you know, and, um, you know, even the righteous, you know, are going to come before the throne of God and have to give an account. Um, now, it doesn't mean that, you know, that we will be um, condemned, you know, uh, we're saved, you know, through our faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, he gives us, you know, a new life in him when we come to him. Um, but again, you know, we um, will have to give an account for, you know, the way we lived our life um how well you know how well we uh took care of the gift that he's given us and by giving us this new life you know um and it's also worth pointing out that it it talks about here that uh the unrighteous of course um those that did not accept the lord uh they did not give any heed to his word um you know, maybe those that just don't even believe in God, don't believe in this, in this, in his word, don't believe in Jesus, don't believe in any of that. Um, uh, you know, those who live for themselves, live for the flesh, don't care about anybody else. Um, you know, their judgment will be uh as it is for the devil and his angels and um it says how uh that those on the left jesus will say depart from me you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels so i know that i had mentioned um i think in the last video how you know hell was not created for mankind god loves mankind um you know, we learned in Genesis 1 how we are uh, the favorite creation of God. Mankind, you know, God loves us so much. He didn't create hell for us. He has no uh, hope or intention for us to end up there. We send ourselves there. and um, But hell was created for the devil and the fallen angels. Uh, but that is our destiny unless, you know, we choose to uh, repent of our sinful nature and um, and turn and follow, you know, our, our Savior. Um, so that gets to my takeaway. <laughs> that brings me to my takeaway quickly here. Um, my takeaway is Matthew 25, 46, where it says, then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. And um, I won't get too long-winded on, on this because that really explains it all. Um, uh, like I said in the last video, you know, when you die, uh, you're going to spend forever in one or two places. Um, there's no middle ground. There's no, you know... Uh, let me, maybe I'll create some kind of, you know, heaven for myself or whatever I want it to be. It will be. Let me will it into being or anything weird like this. It's not like that at all. This book is very clear that, uh, there's two places you go when you die and, um, you know, you're, and that you're gonna spend forever there. All right. Sorry, you guys. My, uh, my sound cut out. Um, on that uh, last recording I was doing. I'm glad that I caught it before I got to the editing stage. Um, but anyway, just quickly, uh, the point I was trying to get to was that uh, God made our inmost being, our spirits, uh, to live forever. You know, we are all spirits in a flesh uh, shell. And when we die, you know, our flesh stays here and our spirit goes on to the next life. God made our spirits to live forever. And uh, so that means that when we get to um, to the next life, you know, it's going to be forever. So uh, you're going to live in one or two places forever. And um, God does not want it to be hell. He doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to see anybody go there. Uh, he died for all. And um, he wants to spend eternity with you. So uh, my point is that uh, 
you know, to seek him, seek him and find him now, you guys, while there's still time. And um, I, I know I've, I've said it before, but, you know, this is part of the reason why I do these Bible studies. Um, I have, you know, such a, a passion for God's word, but I have such a burden uh, for, for mankind. And um, I know that God doesn't want anybody to perish for all eternity. And, you know, and I don't either. I don't want anybody um, to go to hell. So, um, you know, I ask you guys if this is, you know, if this is all foreign to you and uh, you don't know God personally, you're not walking with God, um, you know, the way it says Noah walked with God, you know, he sought God first and his creator came first in his life. And, um, you know, that's how we should all, that's how we should all be. It, like I said, it pleases God so much uh, when his creation, you know, gives their lives back to, to him, the creator. So, I just ask you guys, you know, if you if you don't know God personally, and um, and you're curious and you want to, you know, get in His Word. You will learn all about Him, um, His ways, uh, His heart, His love, um, His patience, uh, His compassion. You know, the His Word is just full of His uh, His holy and beautiful nature, and. Um, but turn to him today with an honest and sincere prayer from your heart. That's all it takes, you guys. Um, repent of your sins. Ask Jesus to help you overcome your sinful nature, to give you his Holy Spirit. And um, his Holy Spirit will come and dwell in you. And uh, you will suddenly want to obey uh, this book. And you will you will want to obey God because you love him. Um, it's just like a child with their parent, you know, we don't want to disappoint our parents, you know, as children, we, we, we don't want to disappoint them. We don't want to dishonor them. You know, we want to obey. We want to make them happy. We want them to be proud of us, you know, and it works the same way, you know, with God, you know, because we love him. We want to obey him. Jesus says, those who love me will obey my word. And uh, that's how we show our love for God, you know, is by uh, being obedient. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean that, you know, we don't make mistakes and all of this. But, you know, it's we suddenly have a desire in our heart to please him and uh, to want to live for him. And uh, the things that break his heart starts to break our hearts. You know, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, in us and it's pretty amazing and uh, so I ask you guys turn to him today um, he's ready he wants a relationship with you he's right there with you right now you know he knows your whole life um, he knows he knew you before you were born before you were conceived he knows the day you're gonna die he knows every detail about you because he loves you that much he concerns himself uh, with you, with your life, with the things you're going through. And uh, he just wants you to turn to him. He wants you to ask um, for forgiveness, ask for help. And uh, he is willing to set you free and, and make you new today. Give you strength for life's trials. You know, it's, it's hard. Life is hard. Um, it's hard for everybody. But um, Jesus gives us a, a peace to get through it, to get through the struggles and it's just beautiful. It's beautiful, you guys. So, all right, I'm going to end it right here and say that if you guys have, you know, comments or questions or prayer requests, please leave them in the comments below. And if you don't feel comfortable leaving it below, please seek my email that is in the description. I would love to hear from you guys. And please know that I am praying for all of you. Um, I ask you to pray for me too. And, uh, I don't think that little Maggie's going to tell us bye because she's uh, gotten very comfortable. And uh, tell everybody bye. Just look up a minute. There we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She's crazy. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.